All right, right here on Hip Hop Connection with the one and only Silver Logan Sharp. What's going on? Got to be you because it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to welcome you to Hip Hop Connection Thank here you. at the Voice of America. Uh, we're going to have a, I'm going to tell you like this. I've heard the sound check, so we're going to have a great show. So you guys want to listen and watch because this is going to be awesome. But let's just get into some of the formalities right now. Okay. How did you get started in the business? Ooh, let's see now. Luckily for me, I come from an artistic family. Okay. And I think my mother recognized very early in the game that I was going to sing, dance, act, something or other. I started out dancing. Oh, okay. And I didn't even take singing seriously. Uh -huh. And later on, moved into singing, modeling, and all that kind of stuff. So I want to say that I think my first singing performance, I was two. Wow. Winning Miss Congeniality. And my mother said, I think I, wait, I was four. I was four. And I um, uh, won a uh, Miss Congeniality contest in South Carolina where my grandfather used to be the college president in Voorhees. And so that whole that whole thing was happening. And I think I got bit by the bug somewhere okay. in there. And luckily for me, my mother really nurtured it All right. and uh, took seriously that I, I got something on my hands and let's see if we can make it work. And she was my first dance teacher, too. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. So. And she's still with blue. you right now. Right now. I call her the momager. Momager. That's right. And she's handling business. She's handling business. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. So in coming up. You know, as a little child and you got the bug, the entertainment bug, uh, what is it about music that seemed to bring something out of you? Wow. Um, I, you know, I, I, that's, that's a very good question because music just penetrated in a way that nothing else did. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was really young and, and dancing and you know, I would move the furniture and pull back the carpet and just choreograph and twirl and, you know, and, and really be into it. And it was just, you know, there are things that you excel in and things that you don't. And for me, it was more music, dance and the arts. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that totally answers the question, but it was just, you know, I can only say that it's through spirit, which spirit is through God, okay. you know, and that's. No other explanation. Okay. So what we're trying to do, we're going to create a timeline here okay. and get from... Because I'm only you, 16. You right, know that. Right. Okay. It's not going to be a long timeline. It's just going to be busy. Okay. A busy right. timeline. <laughs> right. I like that. Um, so you you got started and you, know, you found your niche and you started singing. Uh, when did you start recording? In high school. I went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts. All right. Where I started in dance and then uh, went on to uh, in the vocal music department. And... Fortunately, I was singing with some unbelievable voices at Ellington. You know, they, you know, back then everybody was good. Right. Everybody was good. And um, that that's when I started to come into it because I was the dancer who sang. They were just flat out singing, singing fools. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, Pam Frazier, Kivette Cartledge, Gina Best. I mean, and uh, we had a little group and we did our thing and um and then I think we, you know, I, I don't know. It just started to unfold. I almost okay. don't remember how, how it all started to happen. But I look at it like when you start one thing, the next thing you know, you're on a stage or you're singing at somebody's church or right. somebody's backyard. And next thing you know, you're at a wedding. And next thing you know, you're on stage somewhere. And next thing you know, you're at an auditorium somewhere. Right. And so it just started to build and unfold as I got more confident as a singer. Okay. And started to um, embrace my own voice and my own. I mean, these when I tell you these girls can blow the paint off the walls. <laughs> okay. So it was like, okay, either you got to step up or start dancing. <laughs> so, you know, so I tried to step up and, you know. Cool. Now, who are some of the people you've worked with in the past? Oh, let's see. Um, Yolanda Adams, Roberta Flack. I started singing background with Gene Carn. Okay. Gene Carm was, I think, my first, you know, real professional artist okay. to sing with. And and um, all kinds of people that um, I want to say before and after the whole chic thing. Uh, Elton John. Um, I uh, have worked in the background capacity and singing on records like um, Michael Bolton and, you know, right. Slash from Guns N' Roses or now Velvet Revolver and Kid Rock. So... 
it's a little it's a little wide. Yeah, <laughs> Chaka Khan. I've worked with a place. lot of different people. Yeah, all yeah. over the place. So gained a lot of experience. Why did you decide to say, you know, I'm not just going to do R and B. I'm not going to just do dance, but I'm going to, you know, dabble into a little bit of everything. Because to me, good music is good music. Rock and roll is some of the best music out there. Country music, some of the best music out there. R&B, soul, Motown, some of the best music out there. So all genres have good music. Okay. And for me, luckily, you know, I, I definitely say I was born at the right time to fall into where real music was still appreciated okay. and real. Okay. You know what I mean? Before right. programming and, you know, a lot of things like that, right. which I'm not dissing programming now because we use Especially it too. They program your, your music. Amen. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, luckily for me, um, I like all those different styles of music, okay. you know, so it, it wasn't hard. And if it's a good song, is a good song, is a good song, gotcha. you know, and anybody from Patti LaBelle to Willie Nelson should be able to sing a good song and still get the point across true true so let's talk about your current project Yay. <laughs> what's the name of the current project place to begin place to begin so yes. it's kind of like a beginning for you absolutely and and you always get a chance to start over you always get a chance a lot of people don't think so okay you know what i mean we get caught up with the you know i'm too this i'm too that if you decide that you're going to do something there's always a starting point and I'd written Place to Begin a long time ago, and I was sitting on it, and I just vowed that whenever I finished my first solo record, the title track would be Place to Begin, and okay. the CD would be called Place to Begin, so that wherever I go from here, I had a place had to a begin. Starting point. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So when we pop in the CD, and we hear that first note of the first song mm -hmm. to the last note of the last song, what type of ride are we going on? Oh, Love songs, inspired songs, funky songs, you know, that's it's it's all about being inspired, loving it and getting your groove on at the same time. All right. Now. <laughs> all right. Now, now, um, in doing that, who did you work with on this project? Oh, I had some really great cats, um, namely my uh, co-writer and co-producer, Daryl Hunt, who is uh, the keyboardist who you'll see when we get our jam on later. Okay. And, and um, he did co-write the whole the entire project with the exception of two songs. And I have um, uh, Jerry Barnes, who's the, a bassist, and he's the bassist of Chic, and also um, one of the songwriters of a song called Right Through Me, which we're going to do in the show. Okay. And um, I had an, a guitarist named Sherrod Barnes out of New York, plays with Whitney Houston and all kinds of people. And um, then I also had my bass player, Hamilton Hayes, who you'll meet later. All right. And um, let's see. I had I did, I did probably... 90% of the vocals. I have uh, some other friends of mine, Lizette TT and in and, and Atlanta and uh, Audra Lomax and Ike Archer and Lori Williams and Victoria, a lot of, lot of, a lot of DC people. locals, but, but we kept it kind of tight. You know, okay. we kept it kind of tight. The, the purpose, a lot of records now are made um, with 18 different producers, right? you know, and 15 different people starring on this and starring on that. We purposely kept it tight so that there was consistency like records used to be made that way. Okay. And we wanted it to have a certain kind of a sound. And, and for myself and Daryl, it's an opportunity to put our sound out there. Okay. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. Yeah. Excellent. So where can people around the world get a place to be in? Ooh, my favorite question I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> right now it's on CD Baby. Okay. It's on iTunes, I think Rhapsody and all the various and sundry... Um, uh, uh, web music websites, and I'm working on, you know, landing it. You know, we don't say record stores anymore, but I would love to see my CD sitting in Target. I hear you. You know, in Walmart and places where that's where we buy music now. Right. So, right. but it's online at the moment, and it's and always at my live performances. Okay. So you can always, we always have them at the live shows, but it's online. Yeah. Talking about your live performances, I know you have some coming up. Tell yeah, us about Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm doing Ashford and Simpson's Sugar Bar on June 4th in New York, right okay. on 72nd and West End. It's a very cute place, and everybody you can imagine floats through there. I'm sure. And um, then we come back to D.C. And, and on homegrown turf and play Carter Barron on June 26th. So I'm really looking good. forward to that. Sounds yeah. good. Wow. So you're just really busy. Trying to be. 
That's a good trying thing. to be. You know, it's it's uh, there's so much talent. There's so I mean, on any given night, whether I'm playing or not, all of my friends are playing. So right. if I wasn't at my gig, I would be at their gig. You know, <laughs> so there's there's tons of talent all over D.C. and and the whole East Coast. You know, they they sleeping on D.C. a little bit with the talent here. Cool. You know, but it's we starting to push our way out there. Well, you guys haven't been able to see, but this is a tall drink of water right here. <laughs> She's really tall, and then she had the nerve to put on these shoes Ooh. that uh, are really uh, nice, <laughs> but they're high. Well, and then you know we had to make adjustments to the set I know. and everything. I just come I mean, in wrecking the place. I ain't, it, I ain't no good. Big G had to come and pump my chair up <laughs> and everything because I guess I'm, you know, I'm vertically challenged. No, so. no, no. I'm, I'm just let me tell you, when as a female, when you go through your whole life being taller than everybody else, and then suddenly it's not until you get to adult life and go, oh. There are some people who share the same climate. <laughs> you, you would think I was six feet or something, and I'm really not, but close enough. And, uh, you know, heels and diamonds are a girl's best friend. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of diamonds, uh, you have a jewelry line? I do. It's called Silverware. <gasps> silverware. Silverware. Go figure. <laughs> what? Where'd you get that from? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> Silverware, my mother and I handcraft and and design every single piece of jewelry. Wow. We started out just um, doing it as a hobby. Um, and and I'm, I'm just going to go back a little bit further. A little bit. Let's take it Just back a little bit, bit further. Um, uh, my mother was going through some health challenges. She mm -hmm. suffers from fibromyalgia. Okay. Which when she had it, no one could say it, knew what it was. Right. They didn't care. It doesn't matter. And it's not one of those things that you see it's, physically. It's definitely you know what internal. I mean? Yes. It's internal. And um, through, and I, my aunt, I have an aunt in South Carolina who's her younger sister. And we try to go every year just to get some fresh air. And she um, took her, you know, yearly summer trip. And um, they started to make jewelry. Oh. And my mom came home and said, you know, look what we did. We was, you know, making some little earrings. <laughs> so then the next thing you know, I started making jewelry. And I think for the first seven years, it was just a hobby. Right. And people started to stop us on the street. And, where'd you get, get that? that? I said, like, oh, I made it. Really? What you got? <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want it. And, and at first, I would take it off and let them have it or right. maybe let it buy, like, buy them from it. And then I got home one day and went, oh, <laughs> my necklace is gone. And um, and it just grew. And I got to tell you, when at, in, through her um, most intense suffering days, I asked the creator, I said, listen, I know I'm supposed to be here to sing. I'm mm -hmm. clear about the fact that I'm supposed to be an artist. Mm -hmm. But I need that other thing that I can, you know, take with me and grow with me to really make this work. Okay. And it turned out to be silverware. I didn't know Excellent. it at the time, but it did turn out to be silverware. And now... Our clients are Roberta, um, Yolanda, Elton John. We go. She went to Elton John's wow. to do a show for him. Right. And 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 I wanted to just give him a gift. What do you give Elton John? True. You know what True. do you give Elton John? Elton John. And I thought <laughs> he ain't got no silverware. So I pulled him aside and I said, you know, I just want you to pick something. I brought a few pieces. I just want you to pick something. And he said, you make all this stuff. And I said, yeah. And he said, well. You know, well, you said there's samples. Like, how can I get, you know, you know, how can I get these things? And I said, don't play with me. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, how much for all of it? I said, I'll be right, right back. back. <laughs> and he said, you know, we were at Soundcheck. And he said, well, when you come back, he said, bring me everything. I want all of it. Wow. And he said, and no discounts, no nothing. I want all of it. Now, of course, I only had a smattering of, of what we right. had. Right. But he bought all of it. Wow. that night and said he was going to give it to his friends as uh you know as gifts Excellent. and what have you and when i got up off the floor of course you know i couldn't get to my hotel room fast enough to call my mother from england and say you'll never guess what just happened <laughs> you know but we have clients like one life to live is um has been a long time client of ours really? uh, we used to dress ananda lewis when she had a talk right, show right, and right. so it's it's uh it's really grown in, into its own thing i'm hearing something right now that you're going to be dressing hip-hop connection absolutely that's one of the things you're going to be working on absolutely done deal i i need a necklace i need a necklace <laughs> oh i got you cufflinks okay. necklaces I, it's it's I um i got so you i got you and it's 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 really fun it's different and it's about 
having something that only you have. Like if you were to walk, if you had on a necklace right now right. and you walked down the hall and saw someone with another silverware necklace on, you'll know it's silverware, but it, but won't, it won't be, be your same. piece. Exactly. exactly. So I, I like being unique. Absolutely. I like that. I like absolutely. that. So how can people buy that? www.syl.com. Silverware.com. Okay.